During a disaster, there's often a total blackout of communications where you have no idea what's going on in the world around you or with your family or friends. And this can make the difference between life and death sometimes. So in day eight of the 521 preparedness plan, we're gonna be looking at what some options are. So you gotta figure out who you're wanting to communicate with. If all you wanna do is communicate with emergency services, then your first step is really gonna be a cell phone. Try that, see if you've got a cell phone signal. But as we all know, this often is not the case in a disaster. So another option that's really cool that is kind of an emerging option is if you have a newer cell phone, like a iPhone 14 or later, we'll be able to communicate via satellite with emergency services where you can send a SOS message to emergency services to let them know that you're in trouble and what your location is. And either now or in the future, it sounds like there's also going to be uh, ability to communicate via text messages, even with friends, via satellite. Now what about if you're wanting to communicate with friends or family that are in your local area? Well, there's an interesting option that opens up with two-way radios. And this is really cool because unless you're going through a repeater, it's not dependent on any infrastructure at all, which is really nice for a disaster type of scenario. And there's a lot of bands of radio out there, types of radios and all these things. I don't have time to get into it now. If you check out the resources page, we'll try and have some info there. But be thinking about creating a network of friends or family in the area where you may not be able to communicate with the furthest away friend, but if you can communicate with one friend and they can communicate with the next, you can relay messages and have kind of a network of sorts. So that's a, a really cool option. Then moving on to long distance communications. And with this, you're gonna to want to check out a really cool satellite-based internet option called Starlink. And this is an excellent addition to any emergency communications plan because it doesn't matter what's going on around you in your area, this is going to enable you to get out to the world as long as you have a way to power this thing. And so yes, uh, I do think that there are still some ways that this could be disrupted. So because of that, I don't think that this is a primary that this should be your only means of communications but i think it makes an excellent addition and uh, also it's doing double duty it's probably not costing a whole lot more than what most people are paying for internet access right now and then you just add that additional autonomy on there which is awesome in addition to starlink there's other satellite based devices out there that can to some greater or lesser extent communicate via satellites talking about bivy sticks, Garmin inReach, spot devices that um, adventurers will take with them. They may have a SOS button, so that could be used with emergency services to communicate with them. But it can also, depending upon the device, it may be able to send text messages to friends and that sort of thing. So that's another option to think about for long distance. And then finally, we get to the ultimate long distance communications option as far as independence, and that is ham radio in the HF band, where you're actually bouncing off of the ionosphere and you can talk to another country even. And of course, this is more involved, requires a radio, a you know more expensive radio and training and a license and all this kind of thing, but it's a great option and something to consider uh, be aware though that even with ham radio and HF, it can be disrupted by solar storms and things like that that are happening. And regardless of whatever type of communications you go with, if it involves anything, any device that's electrical, don't forget about power. How are you gonna power that? And we'll be talking about power in a upcoming day of the 521 preparedness plan. Communication is not optional, especially during a disaster. So what I need you to do right now is to determine who it is that you need to communicate with and then take the options that we discussed in this video and find at least one of them that would work for you and start working on that one and get it in place so that you have a plan that works 
so that you can communicate. Be sure and head on over to the resources page at thereadylife.com forward slash 521 for links and other helpful information. And we'll see you tomorrow.